So I would like you guys to watch this video just to get some of the main points out of this. Um, you don't have to go back and correct all of your notes unless you'd like to. Um, you're welcome to then use it on the test. Um, I just want to hit some of the main things here. So we left off at the second system here with the solar panels. Um, the biggest things here in this system, you have light energy from that sunlight causing the solar panel to create electrical energy. And then um, as it flows through the generator and it goes to the light bulb, um, in the light bulb, you have electrical energy to start and then that gets transformed into two different types of energy and if you were paying attention you would have seen both light and thermal energy coming out of this light bulb so then for number three we have our tea kettle so in this system um, the thermal energy from the flames of the fire transfer energy to the kettle causing the liquid to become steam the mechanical energy of the moving steam right the steam had two different types of energy coming out but the mechanical is the one that's allowing, um, that's moving and spinning that turbine. So that mechanical energy um, of the moving steam spins the turbine, which generates electrical energy. And that electrical energy comes through here, um, is used to increase the temperature of the water, and therefore the thermal energy coming out of this, out of the um, water here, is the thermal energy of the steam transferred to the atmosphere. Now another form of energy released from the kettle, if you're paying attention, besides that mechanical would have been your thermal energy. So that last blank would be thermal. For number four, we have our bicyclist pedaling. And um, in this system, we have chemical energy from the bicyclist, and it's converted to a lot of electrical energy. Sorry, it was converted to a lot of mechanical. If you watched the energy come out of her through the bike, you saw some mechanical energy coming through and it goes all the way to the turbine, and then a little bit of thermal. Every time there's friction of the wheel um, rolling, if she's braking at all, and even from her own body heat, there is thermal energy being released. So we have a lot of mechanical energy and a little bit of thermal. Um, the mechanical energy from the turning bicycle wheel still spins the turbine, and it generates electrical energy. So that's where the electricity is coming from. And then, the fluorescent light bulb converts this energy into two new forms, a lot of light, so you would have a lot of light coming out of here, and a little bit of thermal energy. So every once in a while, you might see a little thermal coming out, but it's mostly going to be light. And so that leads us to number five. Um, when you're switching out that fluorescent bulb, it would be um, different from the regular bulb. And the biggest difference was just that the amount of light coming out is different. The fluorescent bulb, the spiral one, had a lot more light compared to the regular bulb. So for number 5A, it says, in your opinion, what light bulb is more efficient? Well, that would be your fluorescent light bulb, that spiral one. And that's just because if something's efficient, it's doing the job the best way. And so a light bulb, the purpose of, it, of a light bulb is to give light. And so here, um, your light bulb would be the, sorry, the fluorescent light bulb would be the most efficient. Um, how do we know this? Well, again, if you're counting or looking at just the number or the amount of light energy and thermal energy coming out, you get a lot more light with that fluorescent bulb. If you're just using the regular bulb, you have probably an equal amount of light and heat. For number six, I was looking for a common form of energy that wasn't included. This would be um, from the five that were not in that key, the other two would have been nuclear or sound. And when you came down to it, sound energy is going to be much more common than your nuclear energy. Um, so for 6A, you could have said anything of where sound would come in. The tea kettle, the bike, or the faucet dripping, they would all make sound. For number seven, we did go through this briefly. Um, all of those systems would be open systems. And how do we know? Well, if you look at any of them, the energy is often being released. It's going off the page if you're looking at the lab itself, and it's just going out into the atmosphere. So it's not all trapped in there. So we would say that's open. And in the real world, they would all be open systems. Anytime, let's say you're driving a car and braking, that heat would be released and go into the air. Um, finally, for number eight, our law of conservation of energy. You should have gotten that straight from your notes and even at the beginning of the lab. Um, energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. 
Well, throughout this whole lab, all you were seeing was energy transforming from one type of energy into another. Thanks for watching.